Hi and welcome to this exhaust system modification DIY video and in this video I'm going to show you how to do your own exhaust system modification that will dramatically improve the looks and sound of the exhaust system on your car. And my target is to spend £225 or less and to get similar results as really expensive exhaust systems that can cost well over £1000. Okay so let's tackle the looks part first. And pretty much the only part of an exhaust that you actually see are the exhaust tips and maybe a little bit of the back box behind them. So my car's got four exhaust tips and that makes it a little bit more expensive for me. But even so, I got four good quality stainless steel exhaust tips for £108 off of eBay. So let's go to the workbench and have a look at them. Okay, so here they are. These are uh, three inch double walled stainless steel exhaust tips. There you go, three inches. Now a three inch tailpipe might not seem very ambitious to some of you guys out there. It comes down to personal choice but it also comes down to how big the cutout is in the back of your bumper unless you want to start cutting it out further and that can look a mess. This is called a weld on exhaust tip. So when I um, cut or pull these off I can just tack weld this at the back and weld it into place. And that's protruding quite far at the moment so I'm probably going to cut back as much as I can get away with to make these fit a little bit further under. And I may decide to stagger them slightly the same as these are where this one's protruding a little bit further. This one's a bit further in and it follows the shape of the bumper. As you can see this beamer and it's an 06 beamer is this uh, so it's quite an old car that is riveted on. I'll drop this back box off so I can work on it on the bench so let's have a look and see how we get on with it. This is the first of two brackets that hold the back box up in place. So I'm just reaching in with a 13mm socket on an extension to get that loosened off and drop down. And there is another bolt normally on the back side of that same bracket but this one sheared off long before I touched it I might add. Okay so moving to the other side now. So just a couple of bolts, one at the front here and one at the back, that's harder to see. And you can see these are really rusty. So I've put plenty of WD-40 on. Some, well, it does help, but it's not a miracle worker, so. Oh, that's not too bad, that one. It's the one at the front that you can't see very easily. Got that one. But what I'm gonna do is just support the back box um, with a block of wood, just so it doesn't drop too far when I take off that other bolt. So before I remove the um, rest of the brackets, I just have one uh, nut still holding it on. I'm going to cut off these bolts here uh, because they're so far gone, you'll never just undo those uh, with sockets or spanners. Now I feel like I'm finally starting the exhaust system modification because with the back box on the bench I can get to those rivets at the top I couldn't get to before, flip it over and drill out the rest of them. I'm just using a 4mm drill bit and the rivets are aluminium so it's not too difficult. Now with the rivets drilled out the next step just to tap them free. Now they're a little bit tight on there so here I'm just using a punch and a hammer and eventually they'll come off. Now at this stage, if I just had some clip-on or push-on tips, I could just push them right on there. And in fact, I could put my weld-in-place ones over as well. But I don't want to be able to look up inside my new exhaust pipes and see this additional pipe up inside there. I just don't think it'll look good, but that's down to personal preference. So I'm going to cut mine off, uh, so I'm using an angle grinder here, just cutting those pipes off flush. Now I know it might make a difference to the resonance or the sound of the exhaust, but I just don't want to see those dirty black pipes up inside my nice stainless steel ones, so that's why I've made this decision. And now I'm just cleaning up the stainless steel in this area of the back box, because I know I'm going to be welding here when I do my exhaust tip install. Speaking of, here they are. It's time to cut these down to length so that they protrude the right amount down past the bumper which I explained earlier. So again, out with the angle grinder, let's get those cut down. It's finally time for the exhaust tip replacement. So here I am just pushing them in place. It's quite a tight fit so I've got a rubber mallet just for tapping them home. And then I'm going to tack weld these in place. I'm not geared up for showing welding and to be honest my welding isn't worth looking at. 
but I will get enough weld on there to at least hold these on. Just a case of getting that back box back on there again. So I've got the bracket that's nearest the rear wheel, which you can see here, and then of course the other one that's near the back bumper of the car. So just getting those screwed back up in place. And then because I cut and chiseled the original exhaust clamp off because it was so rusty, I've got a new one to fit. So this one's a Citroen Peugeot exhaust clamp called a PGP55, and I'll make sure I link to that in the description below. Uh, but that holds the two parts of this exhaust, the main exhaust to the back box quite well. And then it's time to do a quick show and tell. And this is what my BMW exhaust tips used to look like. So you can see they're pretty rusty and horrible. And this is what they look like now, nice, shiny, larger stainless steel double-walled exhaust tips. I think they look a lot better, but I'd be interested to hear what you think, so let me know in the comments below. Well, as we know, that's only half of the project because we want the look and the sound of a high-end exhaust system on a budget. So let's move on to phase two of this project, which is the sound part. And for that, I've got an exhaust cutoff kit. This is a two-inch cutoff valve kit. Um, so you have to get under and measure what size your exhaust is and then buy uh, the kit that's the right size. This is the actual exhaust cutoff valve. And as you can see, it's like a butterfly valve uh, type arrangement. And then it has an actuator at one end, electrically operated. And now these are various different ways of supplying power to the cutoff valve. Uh, so we'll have a look at which one of these is gonna work best for our installation later. And then here's your uh, Y piece. So uh, what you're meant to do is cut into your exhaust system and then weld this in. And then this flange uh, provides a connection for your cutoff valve. And then this is this will be your new exhaust pipe for when you're using the valve. Apart from that, we've got a clamp, another flange, a couple of gaskets, some bolts uh, for um, attaching this flange here and then a little control box. So there you have it, together that all makes up the exhaust cutoff kit. Okay, so regarding the exhaust cutoff install, there's actually a few different ways of doing this and it'll depend on what your situation is under the car. The simplest installation would be to fit this somewhere near the exhaust back box. And if your car has a single exhaust that runs all the way back, and if there's a straight section long enough to fit this in, then that's probably going to be the easiest install for you. You can either just cut the required amount out of the pipe and weld this in, or actually there's a way of um, doing a weldless install, which is using special clamps. So what I've got here is a band clamp, and you can probably just see that this one's for differing size of pipe. So the uh, top part is just a few millimeters smaller than the bottom part. You can find these on eBay and that's perfect if um, your exhaust isn't exactly two inches or exactly two and a half inches. You know, maybe there's a few millimeters difference. You can get one of these and this allows you to make up the difference. You can also get straight ones of these. And to be honest, the straight ones are more common. So if your existing pipe size exactly matches, the new Y piece and that'll be perfect for you. The only thing I'd say is when you're using a band clamp then potentially you're going to need even more distance and as you can see you need quite uh, a, a long straight section in order to fit this in but it is possible to shorten these slightly if your straight sections are quite small uh, but you'll have to do the measuring and you know do the working out on that. Okay, so the next scenario that you might have is you might have a twin exhaust car. So I've got a Z4M and it has two exhaust back boxes. Well, on this particular car, there's actually a center pipe near the middle, which is almost like a mixing pipe. You know, they join together and then they split off and go their own ways. So you can actually get away with one cutoff valve because any back pressure that it generates then goes to the mixing pipe. And so it equals them both out. But not all uh, twin exhaust cars are like this. Sometimes it's literally um, a left-hand side exhaust that runs all the way back from the manifold or the headers. Uh, and then a right-hand one and they're completely separate systems. And that would potentially unbalance the exhaust system and the engine if you only had fitted one valve. So in that situation, you'd be looking at two cutout valves. And the final method to install an exhaust cutoff valve 
and I'm sure some of you have thought of this already, is to do away with this Y piece entirely because it's actually quite a bulky piece of kit. And um, if you cut the pipe off here and then you profile it, you can actually profile it in such a way that it will butt up to your existing exhaust pipe. And then all you have to do is cut a hole in your existing exhaust pipe and then fit this piece which is profiled over it and then weld it on and then that could make this quite a compact system it's awkward it's going to take more time uh, but this is the one i'm probably going to have to do okay so this is the uh, rear the right rear wheel and of course this is the back box on this side and here's my more compact exhaust cutout valve now the actuator at the top the black part as you can see there's room for that to extend up in there and this isn't going to move up and down very much. You know, the exhaust is fixed relative to the underbody of the car. But what you do have to be careful of is these parts, so obviously the shock absorber and the suspension arm. You don't want anything underneath those because potentially they're going to go up and down independently uh, and they could. Um, you don't want to clash with them. So you can see the exhaust pipe will detach there. And I'll probably have to detach the one at the other side too because they join up further underneath the car. So if we spin round now, these are effectively uh, the down pipes just ahead of these. But I've had these undone before and so I can undo both of those quite easily and then uh, drop the exhaust off. So that's where I'm going to do it from. Okay, so this is the car orientation here. And what I've done now that I've got the exhaust off is I've just laid out the exhaust exactly as it came off of the car and so what that means is we can finally get on with the exhaust cutoff valve installation and i've just marked out here where the cutoff valve goes and then i just did a check underneath the car to make sure the actuator um, was going to be in a position where it wouldn't interfere with anything so i've marked up where i'm going to cut this flange off and then what we need then is um, enough of this pipe that we can profile it so that it will butt up to the existing exhaust pipe. And because I want this to be cut off reasonably precisely, I'm gonna use a hacksaw. And you have to make sure you put a lot of marks all the way around because saws tend to run away when you're cutting through hollow tube and you'll end up with it at an angle. So you keep cutting and then moving this pipe around a little bit and make sure you're exactly on your mark. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's pretty straight. Okay, so as you can see, the exhaust cutout valve is looking much more compact now. Some of this will be cut away to profile it to the pipe I'm going to weld it up to. So can you see I've just stretched it a little bit, I just did that in the vise and it's because I want to get as good a fit as possible there uh, because if you get a nice tight fit there uh, then it's a lot easier to weld. Okay so we're ready to go. So I've got that clamped in place temporarily and then I'm just going to tack it at this side and then I'll go around the other side and tack the other side. Okay so I know I'm an awful welder. I am working on it and believe it or not, I'm better than I used to be. You can see there's a lot of weld on there. On this side, I missed entirely. Uh, so I had to come back on a second run. And I'm almost ready to put the exhaust back in place up under the car. But before I do that, I need to find a way of getting power into the car for activating this valve. And it's gonna be a lot easier to do before I put the exhaust up in place. Because the area under the car where this wire is gonna go up, is probably going to be above where this back box sits. Anyway, the cutoff valve kit comes with this long extension cable and that's the one that feeds up into the car. So I'm going to go under the car now. I'm going to have a look and see if there's any obvious areas where it'll go up into the boot. So with the back box down, I can see above it. Okay, so bear with me. I'm going to do a bit of zooming because I want you to see what I'm seeing, which is a number of little grommets. Uh, so there's quite a small one. And the other side, just in the shadow a little bit there, is a bigger one. Now, if they go up into the boot, then it's happy days because that's where I can run the wire through. Okay, so the camera's inside the car, so I'm climbing into the boot here. So you've got perspective of what we're looking at. 
Down here is a little false floor in the boot, which comes out. A lot of cars will have these. Yeah, and I'm pretty made up because it might be awkward to see on the camera, but the small grommets here, and then the larger one that we saw underneath is here. So this fitting that needs to go through is quite big. So I've elected to go for the larger of the grommets. And I'm gonna start with quite a small drill because I'm hoping that the hole that I make will stretch away around this larger bit and then that'll make it a little bit snugger fit on the cable and it'll be easier to seal up then. So it might seem like overkill, but I've just got a uh, six millimeter drill. And I just think that'll be the tidiest way of making a hole through it. That's quite tidy. So let's see what it's like, see if it'll stretch around that. No, no, it's just way too tight to fit still. I'll go for seven mil and see if that's any better. Okay, there we go. And then the rest of this cable, it'll eventually go to a, a power source, cross that bridge when we come to it. So I'll just feed that cable across the top to where I need it to be, to the um, cutoff valve. And then this heat shield will go back up and that will hide that cable from, uh, you know, getting too much of the weather on it. Before I go any further, I want to make sure the cutout valve's working uh, because once the exhaust is back on and the connections are all hidden up above it, um, it's going to be really hard to work on. Here's the connection that comes from the back. So it's quite a long extension and I've just thrown it over to the front of the car. And this is a little uh, cutoff valve switch box. So this particular model I've got, you control with a remote control, but I think that you can just um, plug a little switch um, into this as well, which um, then you mount on your dashboard somewhere or whatever. It's powered by uh, just a cigarette lighter, 12 volt plug. But of course you can snip that off and then uh, wire it in permanently and put a fuse in line and all the rest. Uh, but what I've got at the moment is I've just got a little cigarette lighter extension and that's plugged into the main plug in the car. And then this plugs into your box. So we'll plug that in there. There we go. This is the one that came from the cutout valve. So I'm just gonna plug that into there. And then as you can see, that goes to the box as well. And then you just have this power connection, which I'm gonna plug in. That's lit up, so it says it's getting power now. And what that means, and I don't know what the heck you do with this. Ah, oh, there we go, look, oh, that's, that's it's actually quite good. Uh, so um, what you do is that's a little protective cover so you don't accidentally bump it and you slide that back and then you've got lock and unlock. So I assume that means open and close on your uh, cutout valve. So you push it once and it moves all the ways to the other position. So let's go have a look at the valve. Just have to dive under the car. Okay, so the valve's closed at the moment. Here's my remote control, so I'm gonna push to open it. All right, that's looking good, huh? Let's go for closed. There we go, okay, so the uh, cutout valve control is working, the power's working, so I can go ahead and get that fitted now and hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, so I managed to wrestle the exhaust back under the car and kind of offer it in place. So there you can see the exhaust is kind of like just balancing on this center beam, which is part of my uh, four post lift. So actually the job's been on hold for a couple of days because I've been waiting for some of these, which are graphite seals that go onto the BMW downpipes. So you fit this with the taper um, facing this way uh, towards the rest of the exhaust downstream. And I'm just gonna give it a little extra clean up. Tell you what, I've got some silicone spray. It won't do any harm just to give that a little, a little extra blast. The reason I'm being so fussy is I don't want this to break when I'm trying to tighten it up. I want this to slide where it needs to be. Okay, so this is going on the fire pipe. Well, what I'm gonna do now is slide this exhaust back. And I'm just gonna put the bolts back in just finger tight. So not pulling it up at the moment. This is just so it doesn't fall off again at the front. And now at the back of the car, I'm going to lift up the back of the exhaust into position and maybe even get the pipes started onto the back boxes. And that will effectively mean the exhaust is held up uh, more in the position where it's finally going to be. Um, and then I can look at putting these wires 
uh, back above the exhaust and making sure everything's where it needs to be before I start tightening up all the bolts. What I've decided to do is lift this. It's almost to the back, very back, but there's kind of like this bracket here and I'm going to lift that up and there's a couple of bolts I can put in and it'll just take some of the uh, load off of the exhaust. Okay, so that's not going anywhere now and it's not going to drop on my head. So that's good news. So now I'll take care of all the electrical cables. I thought this exhaust system mod was going to be easy, but it's turning into a couple of days job for a DIY mechanic, but we're getting there. So these are the, um, the downpipe uh, flanges. Uh, which I just put in finger tight earlier. Just gonna get those tightened up now that I'm happy with how everything's looking back there. And I'd actually prefer it if it wasn't quite as long as that. I don't know why it can't just be really short and stubby. And the other thing I don't like about it is you can see it's directing the exhaust more or less at the tire, which I don't think is a good idea. Um, so I might have to modify this a little bit to make it how I want it. So I was just ready to get this thing bolted on then <laughs> and get on with the rest of the job because I really want to test it and show you guys what it sounds like. Um, but the job's got to be done right so I'm going to modify this little tail piece to make it point more away from the wheel and the tyre. So let's have a look and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay so effectively what I want is for this bend to be sharper instead of just this little angle. I want it to kind of come round almost to a 90 degrees really. And I've roughly marked the center line. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut some V's into it. Let's mark those V's on so you can see exactly what I mean. So it'll start off wider at the top. And then it'll taper to a point down near the bottom. So the thick end of the wedge is here. And then as I cut eventually, it'll meet down at the bottom. And what I'll do then is I'll fold that up and I'll weld it up. And I won't cut too big a V because um, when you fold it up, then they might not meet properly and make it hard to weld. And if it's not where I want it to be, then I'll move along and I'll do another and even another if I have to. So let's see how I get on really. Yeah, so this is what I ended up with, a big fat wedge that I've cut in it. And all I'm gonna do now is fold it up which shouldn't be too difficult to do, he says. I'll tell you what, I'll use the vise to fold it up. And what that shows me now is a few areas where I have to cut a little bit more material out in order to fold that up how I want it. As you can see, I welded up the exhaust cut off valve little tailpipe piece and refitted it just under here. And I just had a few bits of trim under the car to put back in place. There's a little rear diffuser and a few other bits and bobs. The install's complete and all we have to do is test it. And I haven't heard it either yet, so I'm just as excited as hopefully you guys are. So let's jump down, get it started up and tested and um, see what this thing sounds like. And now it's time to push the button and let's see if we can tell the difference as the note changes just on takeover. So I don't know if you heard that or not, but just idling, you could hear it go a little bit deeper. Okay, time for some revving and see what this sounds like. Okay, <laughs> so that's shockingly loud now. Um, gonna have to be careful not to upset the neighbors too much with this. Luckily our house is a little bit isolated where it is, but um, I'm sure they can still hear us. <laughs> okay, so uh, that sounded very roarty. Um, further testing required out on the open road and maybe not revving it on my driveway and upsetting the neighbors, you know, so uh, let's do that next. In order to test the sound of my uh, new exhaust modification, I'm gonna do two uh, fairly brisk pullaways from almost a standing start. One with the exhaust cut off valve closed and then a second one with it open. So you can see what the difference is when you pull away briskly from a uh, traffic light, for example. 
and then also I'll do a driving test where I'll do my best to capture the sound from that again with the valve open and closed. Okay, so let's get to it. The first one is pulling away from almost a standstill with the valve closed, so just my standard exhaust sound. Okay, so I'm opening up the valve now for the second run. And just to reassure you, the roads are absolutely empty. I'm not going too crazy, and also um, I'm not going above the speed limits. Just a bit of brisk acceleration, all within the legal laws and all the rest. So don't get too excited in the comments section. And now just a bit of fun back road driving with a little bit of acceleration here and there. First off with the valve in the closed position. Thanks for watching, bye for now.